Great morning, Kingdom Life, and welcome to this edition of WKLM. These are your ministry observations. Tuesday nights at 7.10 p.m. are Tuesday night teachings, also known as TNT Bible Study. Join us as Pastor Wilson breaks down the Word of God in a more practical and more approachable way. We'll see you Tuesday night. Monday, Thursday, the commemoration of the institution of the Lord's Supper and the washing of the disciples' feet. On this special day, Jesus calls his disciples together and teaches them the importance of serving and loving one another. And they left there and they sang a hymn. And that's what we'll do on Thursday, April the 1st at 8 p.m. live from James Rosen Ministries. We will celebrate and remember the Lord's Supper and we will sing hymns to him. So join us. You don't want to miss this special event. We'll see you Thursday, April the 1st at 8 p.m. These have been your ministry observations and we pray that you enjoy the remainder of the service. Once again, this is WKLM and as always remember, there's a place for you in the kingdom. Grace and peace family, it is Minister Desmond Antley here with Gen X. It is Gen X Sunday, can you believe it? I know we've been gone for a minute, but we're back like we never left. Guess what? We have our Gen X praise team with us today. And I believe that this worship experience is gonna bless your life. So I need you to do some things for me. I need you to like, comment, share. I want you to go crazy with the love. I want you to go crazy in the comments. I want you to share this with everybody that you know. If you know some young people in your family, send this to them because I want them to be blessed. We want to bring God into their lives like never before. So why don't you join us as our Gen X praise team gets ready to lead us into worship. Lord, we thank you for this day. We give your name glory and honor for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So kind Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this morning for working us up in our right minds and giving us the activities of our limbs, God. If it had not been for you, we just don't know where we would be. So God, we give your name glory on this morning. We give your name honor on this morning. Speak to our hearts. Give us a word that will pierce our souls to do better for you, Lord God. We ask in the name of Jesus that every hidden agenda, everything that's not like you, Lord God, we cast it out and cast it away and let your agenda be for from. Let your agenda be what you have for us to have, Lord God. So have your way in us, Lord God. Have your way in us, Lord God. Have your way in us, Lord God. It's in the matchless name of Jesus I do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Lord, we lift your name on high. For your name alone is worthy to be praised. Now right there in your home, come on and clap your hands. You can put a smile on your face and let's get the King of Kings. Come on. The Lord of Lord, a great praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give his name praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Song said this right here. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you're in my life. So glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. So Say it again. Lord, I lift the name on high.
walk right and we say, oh. oh.
right where you are to give God an adoration of praise and glory. I dare you to give God all that you have. Because the fact of the matter is, you should have died a long time ago. The fact of the matter is, God should have been took you out. But because he looked beyond your faults and he saw your need, you ought to be grateful this morning. You ought to be grateful that your children are still alive. You, you ought to be grateful that you survived COVID-19. You, you ought to be grateful that you have a house to live in. Come on. Come on, everybody say, say, yo.
because I serve a Savior that never forgot about me. I'm just grateful for him having a good mind that he remember where I am. Father, I thank you for this fleeing moment. Father, I thank you for this moment to share the word of the Lord. Father, I'm empty. Yes, Lord. And Father, I need you to fill me. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let every glad heart say amen. We give God praise for all those that are assembled, and we thank God for what he's getting ready to do in our lives. Let's give it up for the Gen X praise team right there on your digital uh, devices. Give it up, give it up for our Gen X praise team who have been dedicated and committed to give God their gift, and we thank God for their uh, willingness to give God what they have. Give it on to our pastor, the greatest pastor on this side of heaven, Overseer James L. Rosen Jr. And Lady Rosen, we thank God for you and your service to the kingdom. Father, I just thank God for you all. I thank you for allowing Gen X to have a part in the worship experience. There is a word from the Lord coming from the book of Luke chapter 19 verse 28 through 40 Luke chapter 19 verse 28 through 40 as we celebrate Palm Sunday the beginning of Holy Week and it reads and when he had thus spoken he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in which at your entering ye shall find a coat tied whereon yet, a nev yet never a man has sat. Loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do ye loose him? Thou ye say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. And they that were sat went their way and found even as he has said unto them, and as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And when they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And he went, and they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the name, be, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest and some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him master rebuke thy disciples and he answered and said unto them I tell you that if these should hold their peace the stones would immediately cry out I would like to use for a thought for the next couple of moments mission manifested mission manifested this particular account is given in four all four of the gospels Matthew 21 Mark 11 John 12 and here Luke 19 
What's so powerful about this particular event is that uh, this is the same moment uh, as Jesus is riding on the colt through Jerusalem is a prophecy manifested from the book of Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 where it says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people in Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious. Yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. What we find very interesting about this particular account is as Jesus is riding into Jerusalem, the, sh the crowd is shouting, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. The crowd is affirming him, acknowledging him, and praising him. What's very interesting, family, is that in the midst of all of this, Jesus says nothing. He's basically ignoring the crowd. I believe Jesus, to my generation, millennials, I believe Jesus is teaching us something about human affirmation and approval. The affirmation of people can never affirm the calling of God on your life. Can I say that again? The affirmation of people can never affirm the calling of God on your life. My brothers and my sisters, we live in a generation that seeks affirmation and approval from social media. We seek approval from apps that never called us. Number one, we chase celebrity. We will pay money for our Instagram pages to be verified, to have a blue check beside it, so that we can become popular among those that really don't care nothing about us. We want the attention. We chase celebrity. We want to dress like them. We want to act like them. We want to do memes like them. We chase celebrity status that we're not even called to. Number two is what social media does is a danger because it creates constant comparison. How many people like my status? How many people share what I have? Who commented on what I got? Or let's even go further. Look who liked her picture. Who loved that picture. Who shared this. Who shared that. There must be something. that We always are comparing ourselves so we would outdo ourselves to try and beat the most likes and shares from somebody else when, when really the affirmation and the approval of people really don't matter. And number three, we even have the nerve to compare ourselves with pictures that have filters on them. Yes, filters. That means that there is something there that's really not there. I can take a picture and put a filter to cover up some of the mistakes and cover up some of the things that I'm ashamed of so that I can get the approval and the affirmation of people. Why? And what it is, a filter is just what it is. Filtered. It's fake. It's not there. So therefore we chase and we want the approval and the affirmation of people. We have a generation that is addicted to human approval. Everything that we post, everything that we do, everything that we say we got to have the approval of somebody else. When really, when we ask for approvals that we don't get, we begin to get an attitude that is not normal. We get upset. We get sad because somebody does not approve of what we look like. Because somebody does not approve of what we do. And therefore, we are addicted to human approval, which prevents us from really being what God has called us to be. What we can learn from Jesus Christ on this Palm Sunday is that we got to make a decision whether we want the approval of people 
or committed to the mission that God has on your life. There will be moments where the call or the mission of God is not always favorable. There will be times when what God has called us to do, we already know what the end result is going to be like. Because some moments that God has called us to is not always favorable. It's not always shouting good time. It's not always unexpected checks in the mail. It's not always somebody recognizing us. It's not always something that we're looking for to bring glory to ourselves, but there are some moments where we will experience suffering. There are some moments where we will experience some down moments where we got to shut ourselves off from people. We got to do things that are not pleasing to people. Sometimes what God calls us to do, we're not going to always make the people happy. We're not going to always, uh, for preachers, preach messages that make you shout, that make you hang off the chandeliers. There will be some services that are not going to always be good for the itching ear. But there are some things that is only good for the soul of who you are. There will be times... When you know the result will not be what you would rather. And the decision has to be made. I'm talking to all of my millennials. There is a decision right now. There is a critical decision that you have to make. What God wants me to do or what people expect me to do. What God wants me to do or what people expect me to do. And as I found out that human approval and affirmation of people is the enemy's greatest weapon to pull you away from what God has called and created you to do. God, the enemy will use people to boost you, to hype you, and to push you in certain directions where God is not calling you to be. So therefore, because I got a certain amount of people over here hyping me, I believe this is where God wants me to be. I believe, I believe this is the direction that he wants me to go. But that's not always the case. Sometimes God will call you in the wilderness all by yourself. I want to go to the text here. As Jesus is riding through Jerusalem, the crowd is shouting, Hosanna. Hosanna is not a title. Hosanna is not even a noun. But Hosanna is a verb or interjection that means save us. It means save us. So really, as Jesus is riding in the crowd, the people are asking him to save them. Save them from what? He's asking the people, the crowd is asking Jesus to save them from the Roman oppressive government. But Jesus' mission was not to save them from Rome, but to save them from sin. Jesus, Jesus could not respond. Jesus could have responded to the crowd's cry instead of heading to Calvary. At this moment, he is terrified because of where he's headed. It's triumphant, but it's sad at the same time. It's triumphant and it's sad at the same time. What do you do when your calling is requiring a moment of suffering and where you are now is triumphant? Do you stay there or do you stay committed? Do you stay in the hype of the moment or do you keep pushing? Do you keep going? Jesus was terrified. He was terrified. The people are praising him. The people are blessing him. The people are affirming him as Hosanna. They are affirming him as a savior. They are approving him of what he is. But Jesus is terrified because he knew that God did not call him to get them out of Rome, to save them from Caesar, but he knew 
knew that what he got ready to do was something that he didn't want to do. He had to make a decision psychologically. I believe if that was me or you, if we was walking through the crowd and people were going on and raving about us and approving and affirming us, you would go and take a selfie with them. You would go and say, you know what, follow me on Instagram to create more followers because people were affirming you. But Jesus understood that his mission was far greater than a human moment. But his moment was there to save them from sin. So Jesus, he could have he could have responded to the crowd. He could have responded to the crowd. And if Jesus would have responded to the crowd, your sins wouldn't be forgiven. If Jesus would have responded to the crowd, your last slip up would have been your ticket to hell. If God would have responded to the crowd, if Jesus would have responded to the crowd, the car crash would have killed you. If Jesus would have responded to the crowd, the sickness would have taken you out. If Jesus would have responded to the crowd, that disease would still be in your body. But I wish I had about 10 people that are watching with me this morning uh, would say, I thank God he ignored him. I thank God he kept quiet. Uh, don't you know that there is a blessing in being silent? There's a blessing in being silent. But because Jesus knew his mission, he knew that he was headed to suffering. But the only reason I believe that Jesus stayed on the donkey, that Jesus kept going through Jerusalem heading to Calvary was because he knew that Sunday was coming. He knew that where he was was not going to be his landing spot. He knew that where he was was not going to be the end of the story so therefore he made a decision to stay committed and I want to tell somebody that's watching me this morning you got to stay committed I also believe as I was reading this text I also believe that Jesus purposely ignored this crowd what do you mean he purposely ignored the crowd? Because Jesus knew that five days later that the same crowd that was shouting Hosanna, that the same crowd that was shouting Savior, the same crowd that was shouting save us will be the same crowd that will be at Pilate's house five days later and Pilate would ask the question who do you choose Jesus or Barabbas and the people chose Barabbas over Jesus and Pilate said well who what should we do with Jesus should we let him go or should we kill him and the crowd that shouted Hosanna the crowd that rooted him on the crowd that hyped him up the crowd that praised him is the same crowd that said crucify him and you better be careful of yeah you better be careful of people that's always hyping and saying different stuff you got to see with the eyes of discernment because those are the same people that are ready for you to make your next fall and they're ready for you to mess up on your next opportunity matter of fact they want to stop you from getting to your next opportunity they want to stop you from getting for what God has you to have but you got to remain committed he knew that this crowd was going to flip on him he knew that they was going to change their minds on him that's why he kept going my brothers and my sisters don't let the hype fool you my generation don't let what you see fool you well I hear you preacher well I hear that you're saying that he did all this but I really want to know justly of how that he was able to still keep going the only reason I believe that Jesus was able to keep going was because he had a relationship with God to know where everything was going. 
cannot preach like I feel it. You cannot make the next move of your life if you don't have a relationship with God. You can have relationship with HR. You can have a relationship with the CEO. You can have relationship with the who's of who. But if you do not have a relationship with God, you will miss the advantage of your journey. Jesus understood and he knew this is the same Jesus. I believe because he knew what was going on. This is the same Jesus that fast for 40 days and 40 nights. This is the same Jesus that left the people and went up to the hill to pray because he has spent a long time with God. And because he spent a long time with God, he knew that this holy week was his demise but resurrection. And I came to tell somebody, you cannot make it if you don't have relationship with God. Yes, sir, the Baptist um, folks used to sing a song, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear our faint of cry and he'll answer by and by. I feel a little prayer wheel turning and know that the fire is burning. Have a little talk with Jesus. Oh, I feel my help. Have a little talk with Jesus and he will make it right. You got to have relationship. You got to stay committed. So therefore, the mission was manifested that he was riding on a pure donkey that nobody ever rode. This pure moment where he was walking through the crowd and they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna was already prophesied. He was already in the future. He knew what was getting ready to happen. And I came to encourage somebody, I see you in the future. And your soul look better. Your soul look better. Your soul look good. And what God has for you, it is for you. So I want to encourage you. You may be watching and you want to throw in the towel. You want to give up. You want to just say, forget it. This role for me is not it. This role with God is not for me. Seemingly, every time I try to do good, I get knocked back five steps. Every time I try to do what God wants me to do, I pay my tithe. I go to church. I treat people right. But seemingly, I'm still struggling. Seemingly, I'm still in a rut. Seemingly, my family is still at odds. But I want to tell you, stay committed. Because if you stay committed, God will work it out. Out. Lord, I wish I just had a church full of y'all that would help me preach like I feel it. I seen the lightning flashing and I heard the thunder rolling. I seen sin breakers dashing. Lord, I said I wasn't going to preach like this. Trying to conquer my soul. Yes, sir, but I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. And that's what I want to tell you. Fight on. Stay let Jesus be your example. He went through. He walked through. He fought through. And it seemingly he could have gave up. But I got one more point I want to make. I'm so glad that the crowd when they said crucify him crucify him I'm so glad they didn't have the power to crucify him. Well, what you're saying, preacher, you remember what he said? No man takes my life except I lay it down. And I'm so glad that they didn't have the power to do it. All he had to do was lay there and die. But he decided, he decided to die. And I'm going to let pastor finish it on Sunday. But I'm so glad that when he gave me my commission to be in the army of the Lord, I realized that the road got rough. And I realized that the going got tough. And I realized that the hills were hard to climb. But I started out a long time ago. And there's no doubt in my mind. I've, I've decided to, to make Jesus my choice. Yes, sir. If you wait on the Lord, 
and be of good courage. He'll give you strength for the journey. So stay committed. Come on, help me, preacher. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yes, sir, even when my enemies and my foes, they came up against me. They stumble and they fail because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to the glory of God. So you know what? If God be for me, he's more than the whole world against me. You may talk about me, but I don't need your affirmation. I don't need your approval to do what God has called me to do. You may not like it. You may not like me, but God is my source. He's a very present help in the time of a battle. Can I preach like I feel it? I thank God that when he called me, I put my hand to the gospel plow. I was not always worthy, and I'm still not worthy, but he keep using me. He keep using me. He keep sustaining me. Can I get a witness all along? You got to stay committed. Stay committed to the call. Stay committed to the mission. Because some glad morning when y'all, y'all ain't here. When this life is over, if you stay committed, if you give God your all, he will give you a crown of righteousness. But not only right then, but while you're here on earth, the Bible says, yes, sir, he that begun a good work in you, he shall, he shall, he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ return. Yes, sir. So stay committed. Keep your hand on the plow because after a while, the mission is going to be manifested. Every prophecy, every prophecy, every word of wisdom is going to come to fruition. If we just stand still and see the salvation of God, yes, sir. I feel my help, but I'm going to stay in the battle. I'm going to stay in his will. I may have to cry sometime, but I'm going to stay in his will. I may have to moan sometime, but I'm going to stay in his will. I may be talked about. I may be so as a boy, but I'm going to stay in the will. I'm going to keep the mission. I'm going to keep to the call. I may be knocked down but I'm not cast out I may be in but I so won't break yes sir I may be depressed but I won't die I may be oppressed but I'm not giving in because I understand that the call of God that's on my life is bigger than me it's bigger than my family. It's bigger than my money. It's bigger than my cars. It's bigger than whatever I have in the bank. Whatever I'm driving. Whatever I'm living. Because I know when God has a call on your life, it does not mean that you have to be a preacher. It does not mean that you have to be a singer. But sometimes God will anoint you and he'll call you to be an encourager, to be an enabler. He will call you, he will use you for more than the four walls. You may be anointed to go in Walmart and tell somebody the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You may be called, yes sir, to your friends and tell them God has a plan for your life. Don't you give up, don't you give in, but just stay in the will, stay 
in the will of God. Stay with God. The road may get rough. The going may get tough. But stay with God. And he will. Yes, sir. He give you the designs of your heart. If you delight yourself in the Lord. He will. He will. Yes, sir. Desires of your heart, yes, he will. So stand strong and be courageous because the promise is still good. Everything he has called you to do, he has equipped you, he has anointed you, he has qualified you. Yes, he has. So stand in faith and know that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can shoot your best shot, devil. You can try my family. You can try my body. You can try my finances. But I will trust in the Lord. Until I die, I promise him that I would serve him, would serve him, would serve him until I die. Yeah, oh yes. He called me. He qualified me, so therefore, what shall we say to these things? If God be for me, who can be against me? You're more than the governor against you. He's more than the city council against you. He's more than the county council against you. So stand in faith. And believe to see the goodness of God. Glory, glory, glory to God. I thank God that even I want to say to my generation, I know this is your next Sunday and Palm Sunday. Don't be persuaded by people. Don't be moved by people. What God has called you to do, he has equipped you for it. Let me tell you something. People that always seek approval of people, you give them the uh, the emotions of who you are. They're in control of your emotions. They're in control of what you think and what you do. So therefore, understand this, that God has his hand on you. Don't give up. Don't give in. Know that the best is yet to come. Father, I thank you. children I thank you Lord for the call of God on their life even if they're not even aware of it yet but you have called them Father I pray I pray that you'll rescue them place that they're beneath your safety. Father, I pray that you bring them in. Father, I pray for your people that 
they would not settle for the approval of people or the affirmation of people but for what you call them to be father that the emotions will not be predicated on people but father they will put their trust and their will in you father I thank you father I pray for those that are not saved and they want to get to know you according to their sins save them Lord father I thank you dying for us for not even answering the crowd but Father you kept going you stayed committed to the call thank you Jesus Father I pray for Kingdom Life Ministries Father this church will continue to do what you have called it to be cover our leaders Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless them tenfold for all of the labor of love that they have put into this ministry. That they will not go lacking. I thank you now for those that even tithe on today. That sowed a seed today. And even the ones that desire to give. Father, I pray, Father, that you will bless them like never before. Give them what they need. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I pray for that son. I pray for that daughter. I pray for that parent that is worried about their child. Father, that you will hold them in the hall of your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that you are blessed today. I pray that the word has blessed you. I do believe that the best is yet to come for you. Stay in his will. Stay committed to him. Watch him turn around for your good. God bless you today.